This video is meant to help you with your homework that has to do with the orbital filling diagram, which you see up here on this page at, at the top. It's going to be used to do your homework for tonight, and you're going to be learning how to draw electron configurations from orbital diagrams. Again, up here, orbital diagram. So, let's look first of all at helium. Helium is our simplest, well, not our simplest element, but the simplest one we're going to do right now. And when you look at helium, you will see over in here that we have arrows. Now, let's understand what each part of this chart actually means. First of all, this represents a sublevel. This is another sublevel. We name the first sublevel the 1s, which you see right here. The second sublevel is the 2s sublevel. Now, the only difference between 1s and 2s, because they both have only one orbital, which is what these little underlines mean. Those underlines mean orbitals. So they each have only one orbital, and they can only hold two electrons in a sublevel. So the next sublevel that you see here is the 2p. And so I'll bracket that. That's the 2p sublevel. And the 2p sublevel has one, two, three orbitals. And each of those orbitals can hold two electrons. And the electrons are indicated by the up and down arrows. So, as we continue here, you can see we have more and more sublevels, each of which has either one or three orbitals up to this point. And when we get up to the 3D over here, you can see we're going to have one, two, three, four, five orbitals. And we'll talk more about that another time. But for right now, I want you to get comfortable with writing the electron configurations for the simpler elements. Now I've added the atomic number by the elements, and I put a new element up there for boron. And so we're going to be doing the electron configuration for boron after we do the orbital filling diagram, which is over here to the left. And we know for boron that we need to have a total of five electrons. So how do we put those guys in? Let's watch. I have one, two. Notice I'm using just a half arrow. The first arrow goes up, the second one goes down, and we'll talk about that more on our, uh, at our next lesson. So I've used up two out of five electrons that, that boron has. The five here is the atomic number, and that's the number that tells us how many protons, but it also tells us the electrons, so we can do our electron configuration. So I've used two out of five, that means I have three left. And just like I did in the 1s, I'm going to fill up my 2s. And now I've used up 4 out of 5 electrons. And the last electron is going to go right here on the far left. And as we look at this now, we can go ahead and draw an electron configuration for the element boron. So I look over to the left and I see the 1s sublevel, which is this guy. It has got two electrons in it. I see the 2s sublevel also has two electrons. And so I write 2s2. Now, for boron, we also have one electron in the 2p. So we say 2p has one electron. Now we're going to do the electron configuration for phosphorus. And that has a total of 15 electrons, which you can see right here as the atomic number. 
So let's go ahead and let's do the electrons. And by the way, yes, I did change the color for the boron to red to match the electron configuration red. And so I'm going to use different colors to separate the lines so it's easier for you to keep track with your eye. At any rate, we're going to do phosphorus with black and just like with the other guys, now we're putting in our first electron, the 1s and the 2s, and then we will do the 2p. Now notice here I'm doing something kind of strange. You might think it's strange anyway, but this is the way things work. We'll talk about the rules for this later, but each orbital, which are the little underlines here, one, two, three underlines, each of those underlines represents an orbital. Everybody has to get one before anybody within that sublevel gets two. So I'm sitting there with three electrons total in the 2p. I have two in the 1s and two in the 2s. My total electrons to this point are four plus seven, uh, four plus uh, three is seven. And when I subtract 7 from my 15, that's going to leave me a total of how many? 8. That's right. So I still have 8 to get rid of. So I know, now that everybody has 1 in this 2p sublevel, I'm going to start delivering the second electron. So here we go. And now I have 5 left because I have used up 10. So Let's put two of them here. And notice everything goes in order from left to right. Makes it really simple. And keep in mind also that the first principal energy level is the energy level closest to the nucleus. So if this were an atom, my nucleus would actually be at the top of the screen. That helps him. So, or, or, I'm sorry, at the left of the screen, if that helps him. And now we'll do the last three electrons, and they will go here. And let's make sure I did this right. I got 10 for the 1s, 2s, 2p. And then the 3s has got two more for 12, and the 3p has three, and that gives us a total of 15. Now we can write the electron configuration. So for phosphorus, the electron configuration is 1s, 1. 2s, or I'm sorry, 1s2, and 2s2, and then 2p is going to have 6, and the 3s is going to have a total of 2, and the 3p is going to have a total of 3. And that's our electron configuration for phosphorus. Okay, now we'll do zinc. With zinc, you have a total of 30 electrons. And you think, oh my gosh, that's really complicated. But watch how easy it is using this little orbital filling diagram. Okay, we'll start out with the 1s. And the 1s has one up arrow. And I'm having trouble with this. And then it has a down arrow. And we'll just keep going now. One up, one down, up, up. Up, remember, each sub, each orbital has to get one before any of them get two within the 2p sublevel. So here we go with the next one. All right, and I'm just going to just keep writing until I get to where I know I need to be. And you see I'm doing the same thing in the 3p. One up for each of the orbitals until we... Uh, have filled or have given each of the orbitals one. And then the down arrows come in. And then the 4s, same kind of deal. And once the 4s is filled, we really ought to take account of how many electrons we have. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 electrons. We have 10 to go. Is that correct? Let's make sure. Yes, so we're ready to go on. Ten more electrons. Now, the D level works just like the P level too. Okay, a D sublevel is going to have five orbitals. Each of them will have a total of 
two electrons maximum. So I write all the up arrows first, then I come back and let's see, I'm at, I'm at 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. And I have done it. We are ready to write the electron configuration now for zinc. So we have the 1s with 2, we have the 2s with 2, we have the 2p with 6, we have the 3s with 2, we have the 3p with 6, we have the 4s with 2, and I've just run out of room here on my chart, so I'm going to write the 3D below. We would not normally do this. We would write the whole thing in one straight line, but I want to represent what's in the 3D. So we're going to put 3D down here, and in the 3D we have 10. And that is the electron configuration for zinc. Now we'll do it for iron. I wanted to go backwards in terms of atomic numbers because uh, iron, to show you what a partially filled D sublevel would look like. So let's go back now and do our, our arrows. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and now see where this next arrow goes, right at the first orbital, and that makes our 26. So, now we go back and we write the electron configuration for iron as 1s with 2, 2s with 2, 2p with 6, and then we have the 3s with 2, and the 3p with 6, and the 4s with 2, and now the 3d, instead of having 10, will only have 6. Otherwise, zinc and iron, look at those two, the first line that I wrote, because I had to write these in two lines, it's kind of neat to look at it, and that is that the first line of the zinc configuration looks identical to the first line of the iron configuration. And the only difference is in the 3D, it has four fewer electrons. And I hope that gets you going on doing these electron configurations. You can use this sheet and print as many as you want, because they're on the website in today's homework page. And you can then um, use these for all of your homework to write the electron configurations. And this will be very, very helpful for you. Uh, should you do that, then you would want to put the problem numbers on the left-hand side so that I know what problem numbers you're working on from what page. So, hope this is going to help, and uh, wish you the best. And thanks for watching.